Greetings and welcome back to the channel. I hope that you guys are doing well. I'm glad you're here. Today I have some new content for you guys. Uh, a new review series, something that I've never seen here on YouTube really and I thought that I would bring to you guys. I've been thinking about this for well over a year now and based on the interest level, um, I will release more of these based on how people respond to this. Uh, my idea is to present a magician give you a little background information about them and then present 10 of their pieces that I've handpicked out that I think you'd be interested in, which is why you come here to my channel because you're not going to find this on anyone else's channel. The first magician that I've chosen is Max Maven, otherwise known as Phil Goldstein. And part of the reason for that is because I noticed on his social media that he mentioned that he was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor and the last time I checked, it said that he was undergoing a biopsy. So I hope that this is something treatable and I wish him a speedy recovery. That being said, let's get into this magician review. If you're into mentalism, then you probably are well familiar with Max Maven because he's a very prolific mentalist. He has published well over 2,000 effects, books. He's put out a video series. He's a consultant. He's like a TV personality. He's done interactive TV effects, so you should know him pretty well. What a lot of people don't realize is that when he first started out, he mostly just did card magic, and he's very good at card magic. If you question that, all you'd have to do is watch him perform on live television when he does the finger on the fan effect, where he spreads a deck, he runs his finger along the top, a spectator stops him, and that's where their chosen card is. It's very impressive. Um, so he definitely has chops, there's no question about that, but he is more well known for his work in mentalism. And over the years, he's put out lots of effects that a lot of people have used. He's uh, inspired a lot of people to use his principles and create other effects as well. So let's take a look at some of the effects that he's put out. Now I've handpicked 10 effects to present to you guys that you should take a look at. Stuff that I've used over the years stuff that I recommend because it works really well. Um, I've tried to keep away from things that I think would be very difficult to obtain. Um, for instance, he put out a variation of a mental effect that was called, um, I think he just called it rescue, but the original effect was called mental rescue. And you can find that original effect um, in J.G. Thompson's book, that was called My Best. I actually have the book somewhere around here, but it's like in a box because I'm in the middle of moving right now. Um, but Max Maven took the effect and he applied the Gilbreth principle to it to make it um, a little bit more convincing, which is really great. Um, the reason why I didn't even consider that as part of this top 10 list was because that was released as a bonus item on EMC 2010's live lectures which if you had bought that back in 2010, then maybe you have it, but I don't think you could even obtain it anymore. I don't think it's even available anymore. So stuff like that I've tried to not include here, even though it really is a great piece and you should take a look at it. Even if you can't get your hands on that, you should at least take a look at the version that I mentioned in J.G. Thompson's book. Anyway, like I mentioned, most of the stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping all of the stuff that I'm mentioning to you guys on this top 10 list is stuff that you can still buy, get off of eBay or from someone else that you may know. A lot of these items are things that you can actually pick up on Penguin Magic. So let's get into this list of top 10 effects from Max Maven, stuff that you're probably going to be interested in if you like mentalism, if you like mentalism with cards and you're going to love all of this stuff. Um, this was difficult because we're talking about a lot of material that he has and I've been collecting his material over the years. I've got lots of his lecture notes and pamphlets that I bought off eBay years ago. So I've got a lot of material that I went through to put this together for you guys. So let's start with this list. Number one is Mask. Now Mask was published in his book Focus which was a book that was just uh, 60 packet trick effects of his card magic, right? Um, but this effect, Mask, is a impromptu card effect that you could perform on the fly. The reason why I'm mentioning it here is because it's one of those effects that you can do 
um, at your friend's house, uh, at a family's, at a function, if somebody just has a deck of cards. Um, and this was released also as a standalone item on Penguin, so you can also pick it up there if you want to, if you can't get your hands on his book Focus, although I have seen it sold on eBay recently, so you still can buy the book. It's a really good book. There's lots of good stuff in there. The reason why I like this effect is because you have three spectators, you ask them what their favorite cards are, then the three cards are taken out of the pack, um, you tell them that your favorite card is the Joker. Now, if you're using a borrowed deck, then maybe it's like the Ace of Spades. And then you go into a series of where your card turns into each of the selections of, of each spectator and then turns back into the Joker. So it's really the general card theme is really the theme here. What I really liked was there's no difficult moves. It's very easy to perform, totally impromptu, something you're going to use. I like it a lot. So number two is forthright, and this effect is a mental prediction effect with cards. Uh, this was published in almost every set of his lecture notes that he put out. Um, I remember that he put this out on Monty Notes, September Seattle Notes. I think it was even in some Mindvention Notes as well. So if you do get your hands on any of his notes, then you probably uh, will have uh, this effect. The reason why I like it is because it's a very strong... Uh, prediction effect that looks impromptu and there's no slights. It's very easy to perform. You can use a borrowed deck um, or you could have a deck of cards yourself. You have the spectator shuffle them. You take out four odd back cards. You tell them that you have you've made some predictions but usually you only get you know one out of four right. So you, you put out the four predictions. You have the spectator cut the deck into four piles. You ask them to name a number from one to four. You turn over the cards and the one at the number that they named matches. Like for instance, if they said number one, number one would match. Um, so it's an excellent effect. The premise is really clever in terms of like the, the method of it. And like I said, there's no sleight of hand. I think you're gonna like it. I've used it a lot over the years. So number three is Middle Telepathy. And this was published in his Blue Book of Mentalism. Uh, you can get that now if you buy his book Prism. And what this is, is this is Max Maven's take on Adamant's fourth dimension telepathy. Now, fourth dimensional telepathy became famous when Bob Cassidy put out his version. And there are various uh, pros and cons to his version. Um, the effect, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you have three spectators that are going to participate. You have each one of them think of something and you hand out three pieces of card to each of them they write or draw what they're thinking of and they isolate it in an envelope and then the mentalist systematically um, reveal, writes down his own impression of each of what each person's thinking of. They tear open the envelope and immediately hand it back to them, which is the best way to perform fourth dimensional telepathy. Now, Max Maven's version, what I really liked about it was that he solved one of the biggest problems to the routine um, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but it's like a hurdle that you have to get over. Now, some of my friends that like the effect, but they don't like doing center tears, or or maybe they're not, they don't like doing certain peaks. They want something that's a little bit more user friendly. This may be something you want to take a look at, because Max Maven introduces a principle that helps you get around the center tear in the peak that is utilized in the routine. So, if you're familiar with the routine then you will understand what I'm talking about. I also liked his idea of using a match book as um, a billet index. It was really clever too. So you may like that a lot. Even if you don't like his solution, you can use his principle in a different way to suit whatever it is is your performing style. So middle telepathy is definitely something you should check out if you're into fourth dimensional telepathy. Number four on my list is 37th Parallel. Now, this piece was published in the 1980 December version of Pabular. Now, you can still buy Pabular on eBay. I know that there's a digital Pabular you can also buy. And the reason I like the effect is because it's totally impromptu in nature. You just need two spectators and three pieces of paper or even a napkin you could do this with in a pen. So, you tell the spectators that you're going to write a prediction. You write something on a piece of paper. You leave it out in the open. You tell the first person to think of a number. They think of a number. You have them do a simple calculation with the number and you have them write their answer on a piece of paper and fold it up. Then the third, second person 
you have them just think of a number and write it down. Now, the amazing part is when you open up the papers and reveal, they all match. It's just like really amazing. Now, sometimes the second person's number won't match perfectly, but it'll be really close, which is literally almost a hit in its own right. So I really like the effect, especially the impromptu nature about it. If you're looking for like a nice mental effect that you can do on the fly, you don't need anything, then this is something you should definitely check out. It's in Pabular. Number five on my list is the Mockingbird. This is an incredible mental effect with playing cards. Now it was very famous and you probably know of the effect, but you may not know the origins of it. Max Maven was impressed with Anaman's eagle location and he wanted to come up with some impossible locations of his own. So he dubbed these the birds of prey. And besides the mockingbird, he's also put into print another impossible card location called the hawk, if you're interested in that. There are a number of other impossible card locations, which he calls the vulture. I think there's one he calls it the vicious hummingbird, which he has not put those in print. He's not released those yet. Hopefully he will. Here, this effect, the Mockingbird, this was put out on his video mindset, his old VHS set, I think it was the first tape. And uh, the way the effect looks is you have a spectator shuffle a deck of cards, then it's divided into four sections and four spectators shuffle each section as much as they like. Then they return it to the table, each section, and you have a spectator take a pile, go through it, take out whatever card they like and put it in their pocket. So in continuation, the mentalist has to figure out where the mate of the card in their pocket is. Now keep in mind, the deck has been shuffled completely multiple times. So he picks up a pile, he fans it, shows it to the spectator, and just tells him to think yes or no, whether or not they see the mate to the card. And then immediately the mentalist can read their mind and say, tell them whether or not the mate is in that pile. What I really like, and what probably most people really like, is that the procedure to whittle down to the card literally takes less than 10 seconds. Um, and it looks like real mind reading. So it's an effect that I think that you're gonna like a lot. And it's definitely something that uh, you may wanna take a look at if you're into that kind of effect. Um, he does use the Gilbreth principle, uh, what he has coined a thing of terrifying beauty. Um, and so it's one of those things that you definitely should take a look at if you're into mentalism with playing cards, because it really does look like real mind reading. Number six on my list is B-Wave or B-Wave. Now, Max Maven published this in 1992. I think it was called his Music City Notes is where he published it. He did also release it as a standalone item in his lectures, and I think he had Tone Anasaka sell it in Japan. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize is that the four card brain wave type effect has existed for years. I think Di Vernon had a version out. You'll find versions all throughout the literature. And Max Maven himself actually put out a version back in 1979, which he called Brevis. Uh, you can find that in his publication, Goldstein's Gallery. I actually have it in a box somewhere around here. Um, the reason I didn't like his original version, Brevis, was because he was using six cards, which he tries to pass off as four. Now, B-Wave or B-Wave, you can buy this from Penguin Magic if you want to. Probably most people know it. It's probably his most widely known effect, and it's because it's so simple to perform. There's no slights at all, and the gaff does all of the hard work for you, so to speak. Um, if you're not familiar with the effect, what it looks like is this, is you tell the spectator that you've got four queens, you take out, you know, four cards that look like they're face down, you ask them to choose red or black, and then you have them choose a suit, and you spread the cards and show them that the only face-up queen is the suit that they're thinking of. In continuation, you take out the card and show them that it's the only one with an odd back, and then finally you turn over the pack and you show them that it's the only uh, card that's actually printed. The other ones are blank. So that's what B-Wave looks like. Now there's a lot of uh, ungimmicked or ungaffed versions out there. I would tell you that in recent times I did see that Pablo Amira put out a version which was absolutely horrible. You should really stay away from that. Um, there's also some other version out there that I think it was called like the poor man's B-Wave. It's also horrible. Stay away from it, it's terrible. Um, if you are interested in a non-gaffed version, I will point you to Carl Fulves' 
Chronicles, he actually put out a version, I think it was called Red Blues. It's in, it's in the Chronicles. And let me show you exactly what it looks like and how clean it looks. It only uses four cards. The slides are super simple. Take a look at what it looks like. So this excellent variation does not use any gaff cards and it's extremely simple to perform. There's no difficult slides. You approach a spectator and you tell them that you have an envelope with four cards in it. And one of them is distinctly different from the other ones. You tell them to choose a color red or black. Let's say that they say red and then you say, okay, do you want the hearts or do you want the diamonds? Which one do you prefer, hearts or diamonds? Your choice, free choice. Let's say that they said in this case, uh, hearts. So you say, check this out. This is what's really weird is that in this packet, the only card that's face up is this ace of hearts. So I knew you were gonna choose hearts. In fact, it's the only card that has a different color back to it. And if we look at the other cards, the other cards, they're actually all kings. That's it. All right, number seven is out of mine. Now, this is another mental effect with playing cards, and this was put out on his KFAB DVD set. It was DVD two. This is my favorite effect from the whole set. And the reason is because it's totally impromptu in nature. Um, you can use a borrowed deck and it looks impossible. Um, you take a deck of cards, the spectators have shuffled it extensively. And what you do is you tell the spectators, I'm gonna show you some cards, I want you to mentally think of one. You start showing them cards and they're going to mentally think of a card. Um, afterwards, you shuffle the deck again, right in front of them, you're shuffling the deck. You tell them not to forget about their card. Uh, in continuation, you say, look, I'm going to show you some cards again. Just think in your mind, stop when you see your card. So you start showing them cards. And then at some point you say, okay, did you say stop? I think I heard you say stop. And they're like, yeah. You hand them the deck and you start taking cards off of the deck into your own hands. And then if by clairvoyance, it seems by clairvoyance, you get a sense that you stop there and you say, okay, I've got a sense that this is it. This is the moment. What's the card you're thinking of? Only now do they reveal to you the card that they're merely thinking of. You turn over the card and it, it's a perfect hit. Um, it really is a colossal effect um, because it looks like real mind reading. Um, so I think you should definitely take a look at that. I've used it myself so many times I can't even tell you. The reactions are just unbelievable. I wish I actually had some recorded reactions to show you guys because it's actually really something strong. Um, this is like a hidden gem of Max Maven's. That's there. Number eight on my list of top 10 Max Maven effects is Kurotsuki. Now this was also put out on Max's Video Mind series, and I think it was the third VHS tape. Um, this is an impromptu effect that really packs a wallop. It uses five spectators. You're probably familiar with it because a lot of magicians have utilized Max Maven's principle, which has been no come to be known as the Kurotsuki principle, and they use it in their effects. If you're not familiar with it, um, the uh, mentalist has an opaque bag. They have five stones. One is a different color, so it's like four white stones, one black stone. Uh, you have five spectators. Each one reaches in and takes a stone. They hide it in their hand, and you mentally can tell who has the odd stone. That is the effect. Now, some people have tried to put out um, different versions of this because they didn't like the outs that Max uses in his original effect. And I'll tell you that a lot of those versions are horrible. Um, I will recommend that if you are interested in a different version where you will immediately know when the spectator has taken out the odd object, I would recommend you check out Christopher Taylor's version, which he did put in print. I don't remember the exact name of it at this point, but I remember it was very clever and you will immediately know when one of the spectators has taken out the odd ball. The nice thing about the effect is it can be completely impromptu. You can do it with just like a lunch bag, like a, like a paper bag, and just any objects that will fit in your hand as long as one is different from the other ones. The original version is perfect the way it is and gets really good reactions, but if you are interested in a more robust routine, I will also recommend that you check out Alexander Dakova's routine called Totally Stoned. I think that's what it was called at least. Um, that routine utilizes a devil's hank and it's a little different than Kurotsuki, but it is based on that effect. 
The way that it looks like is this, is that you put out a prediction and you take out a hank, which of course is gonna be the devil's hank. And here I'm, I'm using the devil's bandana. This is another product that was recently put out this past year. Um, you have seven stones. Uh, like for instance, you have like three white, three green, and then like a black stone. And what you do is you put them in the hank, you mix them up, and you have five spectators each reach in, take out a stone and hide it in their hands. And then you open up the hank and there's two stones left over. Now, just like in Kurotsuke, you're able to tell who has the odd stone. And because you're using a devil's hank, you'll know exactly who has the odd stone. And then as a kicker, uh, the two stones that are left in the hank match your prediction, which is really nice. And the effect, it's just really sweet effect because, because there's two stones left over in the hank, it definitely does clean up a lot of the issues you might have when you use a devil's hank. Now, if you do have this product and you're curious about, you know, what can I use it for? Because you've probably seen reviews of it, but nobody tells you what to do with it. Nobody tells you any good routines to use it with. That's why you come to my channel, right? I'm telling you to check out this effect by Alexander Dakova. Totally stoned. You're going to like it a lot. All right, moving along. Number nine, we have Monorol, which was published in Max Maven's book, Fifth which was part of the Lisp series. Now, this is pocket mentalism at its best. I consider this to be a hidden gem in one of my favorite effects of Max Mavens. You approach a spectator, you take out a pocket-sized address book, you give it to them and you tell them to look through it. They're gonna see names and numbers, addresses. Uh, there's over 70 in the book. You tell them to just mentally think of one. So they mentally think of it and to mentally send it to you. In real time, you read their mind, you tell them the name they're thinking of, and you can even reveal the number. All the phone numbers are different too, which is great. Um, so there's a lot of principles at work here, and just in usual Max Maven fashion, it's very clever. Um, I really liked how he interwove so many ideas in this one routine that there's very minimal memory work required. So you would imagine something like this would require a lot of mental gymnastics or memory work, and there's very little of that required to do the routine. It's extremely clever. I've used it for years and I still go back to it all the time. Even though carrying an address book may seem a little bit strange, um, it's definitely worth it just for this effect alone. So you should check that out if you're looking for something that sounds like this. Finally, number 10 on my list of top 10 Max Maven effects is really a principle from his book, Verbal Control, and that is Max Maven's additions or contributions to Equivoke or Equivoque, uh, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, so Max Maven, he put out Verbal Control, and if you do have the publication, you'll see he gives you lots of different ideas of how you can use Equivoque um, and his additions to it. He did also put out a DVD, Multiplicity, which has a bunch of routines as well there, but this is definitely a technique, a principle that you should learn well, especially if you're into mentalism, and I think that Max's additions to it really help uh, to make the effect or the principle a lot more believable. Now, I'm gonna leave you guys with a performance of Max Maven doing it in real time on television in the 70s when he performed it, and you're gonna see how clean it looks, um, it really gets good reactions. So something you definitely should take a look at um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed uh, this review and found something here that piques your interest. I try to bring you guys stuff that you're not gonna find anywhere else here on YouTube. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, just leave me a, a comment below. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into my magic reviews. Let's take a look at Max's performance around do not let the camera see it do not let any of the other participants see it tell me when you yourself know what it is okay. would you replace it among the others now pat as we've only got five symbols and you've placed it on the bottom you've made it far too easy you'd better mix them again so that the location is totally lost and then rather than my handling the symbols i'm going to ask you to hand them over to jim okay. jim would you take the five and deal them out in front of you face down in a row in any order you like At this moment, I think you will have to agree, Jim, that there's no way that anybody could be sure as to which symbol is where 
Right. And the only one who would know which symbol belongs to Pat is Pat herself. Right. And even she doesn't know where her symbol is because the cards are face down. You must trust your own intuition here, Jim. But I must find out from you if you are right-handed or left-handed. Right. Right-handed. In that case, would you take your left hand and push one of the five forward? Are you sure about that? You may change your mind. That's the card. All right, take your right hand and push a different one forward, please. From anywhere. Now, you've pushed two of them forward, and I, I want it quite clear. I didn't make you choose those two. Did I? No. All right. Would you like to exchange either of those two for the three remaining, or are those the two you're happy with? I think I'll change the first one. I All right, please do. Now, you're satisfied with those two? Yes. I could not have possibly made you pick those two. No. All right. We'll put these three away. You pick up the two that you like, but do not look at them. Just hold one in either hand. This is an impulse decision. When I snap my fingers, you must give one away to me. But please, it must be your own choice. Not my decision, yours. Are you sure? Yes. You're positive? Absolutely. Would you like to trade? Not at all. All right. You're holding one symbol, and in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to look at it. But before I do two things, first of all, I must know, was that your own decision? Yes. I didn't make you take that symbol for yourself. No, you didn't. It was your own choice. Yep. You'll also recall that Pat is thinking of a symbol. She's the only one who knows what it is. Nobody knows what that symbol is. Your own intuition has led you to take it. Correct. What symbol are you thinking of, Pat? Do you want me to say it? Yes. No. The circle. circle. How did you do? <laughs> Thank you.